to start with. Um, let me just uh, frame this up a little bit. For those of you particularly who may have not followed a CISA petition uh, before, the way it works is a, a member of the public, in this case uh, an organization, submitted a petition to protect um, one ecologically separate uh, unit of, of a species and um, petitions the commission. The commission receives that petition. Um, we then pass that petition along to the Department of Fish and Wildlife, who has a, a period of time, in this case 90 days, to come back to us, the commission, and let us know whether it may be warranted to list that species as threatened or endangered. We are not in deciding whether or not to list it today. We're deciding whether or not, based on the in research done in that 90-day period by the department, whether or not listing may be warranted. I want to be speaking plain language. It is a very low bar in determining whether it may be warranted. Petitioners generally don't apply for petition for animals that are and species that are not in, in any question of danger. Um, and so the bar is very low on whether it may be warranted. The key word here is may. And so it's a low bar for us to, as a commission to whether to pass it to the next step. That being said, the department does the study, and then we make our decision based on their recommendation and our own judgment about whether or not, in fact, it's warranted. We're not going to be deciding today whether to list it. But for those of you who are very concerned about this species, in particular this species in this area that we're looking at, if we determine today that it may be warranted and the department goes back and spends a good deal of time doing very deep gather, collect, uh, collecting of information, gathering information, researching, and analyzing information, um, the species is protected during that time period for the obvious reason that CISA anticipated that if a species was really at deep risk and we spent a year studying whether it was at risk, it might be gone by the time we finished that study period. And so CISA, when it was passed in a landmark law, um, anticipated this process that way. And so I just want to let people know that process so you understand what it is we're talking about today. Um, it's not a debate between people who feel something maybe and a species may be protected and those who feel it may not. It's a question of whether or not, given the research done by the, the department, the information provided by the petitioner, whether or not it may be warranted to list this species. Um, so with that, I'm going to pass it over to, uh, to Chuck Bonham, director of the department, actually next to speak for a few minutes, and then we'll go to Ari to introduce the item substantively. Get the speaker a little bit closer. We are practicing distancing here in the conference room, so. Like the President said, my name is Chuck Bonham. I'm the Director of the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. And I wanted to, on behalf of the department, give this conversation my perspective about today's focus. I have spent a lot of time thinking about mountain lions. I realize that those majestic animals involve a variety of items and bring to the conversation parts of our communities in California that may have difference in opinion. That is a broader range of topics than my recommendation relative to today's focus. In a moment, what you will hear is a presentation from department scientific staff. As the President mentioned, there are three steps in the listing process. The first one is someone submits a petition and the Commission makes sure it's filled out correctly. The second one is where we are today. After a petition evaluation report by the Department, the Commission will make a determination if the proposed action may be warranted. If the Commission concludes yes, we do a scientific review for a year. So when you hear our staff presentation, it is very focused on the actual specific statutory and regulatory components to do this second step evaluation. That's it. And as everyone should now know, the department's conclusion after that analysis is yes, in fact, the petition action may be warranted. What we may all end up engaging in in the course of this hour could include policy. It's likely to include law. 
I've taken a moment to look at and read all of the comment letters that have been submitted are contained in the administrative record. And on this legal front, I think you may hear several things today. You may hear reference to Proposition 117. You may hear reference to merely accepting the petition could itself be an illegal activity because there is a conflict. I would just say from the department's view, the department has a legal obligation to harmonize the requirements of different laws. Should a vote by the commission bring mountain lion within its protections? There's a long line of case law that tells us in the construction of a statute all provisions must be considered together and must be reconciled as far as possible, and particular provisions must not be construed to defeat the general purposes and policy of a suite of laws. So we enter this space believing there's no automatic conflict. Our obligation would be to reconcile and harmonize and really insisting that people pause for a moment and hear our staff presentation based on this narrow focus at this second step along the way. President, I'd like a chance as we go through public comment to reflect on what we may hear. I've been thinking about the element of depredation. I've been thinking about the importance of building our housing stock in California given homelessness and coming out of the economic crisis related to COVID-19. And I'd like a chance to offer some thoughts as those ideas and discussions may occur in public comment. Okay, terrific. Yeah. So with that, why don't we get started? Good, so yeah, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna um, uh, now turn over to Ari briefly and he's gonna uh, have the department staff speak. We're gonna have a number of public officials speak uh, after the petitioner speaks um, and then um, we will allow the public to speak, and then I think uh, all of us, uh, you, Director Bonham, I think uh, perhaps our council may want to speak, and I know commissioners will want to talk about it as well. We're, we're, we're open for a, for, a, for a robust conversation about this as we go. So uh, next, I'd like Ari uh, from our staff to, to kick off and, and introduce the, the uh, department presenter. Thank you, President Sklar. The, the petition for Mountain Lion was received on June 25th, 2019, and the department's evaluation of that petition was received by the commission at its February 2020 meeting. Today's item is to determine whether listing certain populations of mountain lion as threatened or endangered under the California Endangered Species Act may be warranted. I wanted to note that in addition to what was included in the meeting materials, that the commissioners received just over 2,200 letters from the public. And while the vast majority were in support of the department and staff recommendation, there were letters on both sides of the issue. If the commission determines that listing may be warranted, the department will undertake a one-year status review before the commission can make a final decision on listing. And now we'll turn it over to Esther Burkett, who's statewide coordinator for the department. Can you hear me okay, Ari? Yes, we can. Go yes, ahead, please. Yes. Thank you, Esther. Great, thank you. Good afternoon, President Scalar and Commissioners. My name is Esther Burkett. I work in the Wildlife Branch in the Non-Game Wildlife Program where I am the department's statewide coordinator for carnivore conservation, among other duties. I will present a summary of the department's evaluation of the petition. Next slide. Here is an outline of my presentation. I'll begin with the conservation status of mountain lions, including their special status in California, followed by an overview of the species and the petition evaluation process. I will then summarize the department's petition evaluation report and conclude with our recommendation. Next slide. 
Mountain lions formerly occupied most of North America over a broad range, as shown in green at the top of the map, with the little hatch marks there in the west of North America, but their current range is now mostly restricted to the western states. The eastern cougar subspecies was determined to be extinct and was removed from the federal endangered species list in 2018. The Florida panther subspecies was listed as endangered under the Federal Endangered Species Act in 1973. In California, mountain lions have undergone many changes in legal status over time, including a bountied predator from 1907 to 1963 and a non-game mammal, among other designations. In 1990, they became a specially protected mammal under state law after voters passed Proposition 117. And it's unlawful to take mountain lions except for the uh, special exceptions noted here on the slide at the bottom. Next slide. Mountain lions are also known by the common names of puma, cougar, or panther. They are classified in the order Carnivora and the cat family Felidae with the species name of Puma concolor. Two subspecies were originally recognized in California, Californica and brown eye, as shown on this map from 1937, with the lower Colorado River portion of the map showing the range of the Yuma mountain lion or Yuma puma subspecies. However, more recent morphometric and genetic studies indicate insufficient evidence for the Yuma mountain lion subspecies, though few specimens exist for genetic and morphometric studies. The petition considered these low-density transients and resident lions of southeastern California as included within the proposed Southern California Central Coast ESU. Next slide. This map is figure one from the department's petition evaluation report, represents our mapping of habitat suitability and corresponding geographic range of the mountain lion in California in 2000. The distribution of deer, which are the primary prey of lions, was used as an indicator of habitat suitability. And additional records and observations of lions were added to complete the map. This range map closely aligns with maps in the petition of the distribution of mountain lion genetic subpopulations, which I'll discuss a bit later. The petition noted that divergence of the genetic subpopulations is likely the result of habitat fragmentation caused by roads and development and this map helps, helps depict the fragmented nature of suitable mountain lion habitat, particularly in Southern California due to development roads and highways. That would be the white areas there in San Diego, Orange, LA counties. Next slide. Mountain lions are apex predators in the food chain and are primarily solitary, territorial, and occur in low densities. Exceptions to their solitary nature occur during breeding activities, when females are rearing kittens, or when sub-adults are dispersing with siblings. Female lions care for the young for one to two years, and the picture in the slide shows a female with two large juveniles. Mountain lions reach sexual maturity at two to four years of age and have a polygynous social structure, and the home range of a territorial male overlaps with several females. Sub-adult mountain lions, or male lions, immigrate further from their natal area than the sub-adult females. The potential for long-distance immigration by young male lions has an important demographic influence if the dispersers can establish a territory, become breeders, and increase the genetic diversity of the population. Next slide. The department evaluated the petition to determine if it included sufficient scientific information to indicate the petitioned action may be warranted. Our review focused on these 12 topics that CISA listing petitions are required to address. Next slide. The petition proposes CISA listing for six genetic subpopulations of mountain lions, combined or in part, as a Southern California Central Coast ESU. The six subpopulations are located between the coast and the heavy black line on this map, and each color represents a distinct genetic subpopulation. They're also listed on the, the left bottom of the slide there, the six um, subpopulations. The petitioners used interstate freeways and major highways to define the proposed ESU boundary from a habitat and management perspective and in recognition of the need to maintain gene flow between the relatively large 
Western Sierra Nevada subpopulation of mountain lions and the smaller genetic subpopulations in the proposed ESU. Based on the department's evaluation of the petition, we concluded it presents sufficient scientific information with respect to all 12 of the required topics. Next slide. Mountain lions are secretive and elusive, making population trend and abundance estimates difficult to determine. The petition included information from the department's mountain lion webpage, which uses a statewide population estimate of four to 6,000 mountain lions. The petition also included published information on genetic diversity and genetic population structure of mountain lions in California. The results of the analysis are presented in this table which displays the six genetic subpopulations of lions in the proposed DSU. The population estimates in the table list the genetically derived effective population size in the middle column and the estimated total adult population size in the right-hand column. As you can see, the range of values on the right are five to 10 adult lions in the Central Coast South Santa Monica Mountains area and 113 to 226 adult lions in the Central Coast Central subpopulation. Most of the other genetic subpopulations are struggling with low population sizes and genetic near isolation, leading to low genetic diversity, which puts them at increased risk of extinction. Next slide. The petition summarized that most factors affecting the ability of the Southern California and Central Coast mountain lion populations to survive and reproduce are caused by humans. Lack of habitat connectivity is the primary driver, and habitat loss and fragmentation due to roads and development have led to extreme levels of isolation and high mortality rates, which are driving these populations towards extinction. With low genetic diversity and high risk of inbreeding depression due to genetic isolation, vehicle strikes on roads, increased conflicts with humans that lead to depredation kills, high levels of intraspecific strife, rodenticide and other environmental toxicant poisoning, and impacts of more frequent wildfires and climate change, the lion populations will likely not persist unless there is a concerted effort to restore and enhance functional connectivity between populations and large blocks of heterogeneous habitats. Next slide. The petition discussed how development in wildlands and linkages will intensify as Southern California's population increases. The petition noted that continued development and expansion of roads and highways and wildlife habitats without ensuring adequate habitat connectivity will lead to a continued decline in the genetic health of mountain lion populations and increase the number of mountain lions killed by vehicle strikes and other human activity. The petition also discussed the need for preservation of intact linkages, especially the Tehachapi and Sierra Polona Mountains as essential to maintain statewide genetic connectivity. One recommended management action in the petition was to design and build crossing infrastructure in strategic locations to improve wildlife connectivity and permeability at existing roads and highways. Next slide. Mountain lions require large areas of relatively undisturbed habitat with adequate prey abundance and habitat connectivity to allow for successful dispersal and gene flow. They have large home ranges that include a mix of habitats, including riparian, chaparral, oak woodlands, coniferous forests, grasslands, and occasionally in rocky desert uplands. They require sufficient cover in order to stalk, ambush, and cache their prey. And this is a picture of a puma caching a deer carcass. Mountain lions are opportunistic predators, and they have been documented eating a wide variety of other large and smaller prey including elk, bighorn sheep, wild pigs, coyotes, bobcats, fishers, and livestock. Next slide. The petition presents information to indicate existing regulatory mechanisms, such as the California Environmental Quality Act and large landscape conservation efforts, such as natural community conservation plans, do not adequately protect mountain lions within the proposed DSU from impacts that threaten their long-term survival. 
In particular, as stated in the petition and as cited in scientific reports, land use planning and permanent protection of habitat needs to occur at a larger scale across jurisdictional boundaries and include multiple functional habitat connections and corridors to allow safe movement by mountain lions and their prey, while also lessening the human-caused mortality factor of vehicle strikes. Next slide. The department concludes the petition meets the requirement in Fish and Game Code Section 2072.3 that it includes sufficient scientific information to indicate the petitioned action may be warranted. The department recommends the commission accept the petition for further consideration under CESA. Next slide. That's it. Uh, thank you. I am available for any questions you may have regarding the presentation. Um, great. Thank you very much, Esther. Appreciate it. Any commissioners, any question for Esther? Hearing none, our next speaker is Tiffany Yap from the PhD from the Center for Biological Diversity. Tiffany and Deborah Chase, and Deborah Chase from the Mountain Lion Foundation. Are, are you two on the presenter line? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. This Good. is Tiffany. Okay, great. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, only thing I would ask you, Tiffany, you have a great presentation. I, I see it ahead of it. Um, Esther covered a lot of it uh, identically because there's not much difference between what she found and what you guys presented. So I, I, as best you can, I would encourage you to move quickly through the stuff that's already been said. Sure. Okay. Will do. Thank you. Thank you, Tiffany. Is Deborah going to be joining you? I think so. I don't – she should be. Um, Deborah, are you – on the line? Yes, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, Tiffany, why don't you start out now? We'll go to Deborah. I can Appreciate hear you. Thank you. All right, go ahead. Okay, great. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you. Good afternoon, President Scar and Commissioners. Uh, I'm Tiffany App. I'm a scientist at the Center for Biological Diversity. And as you just heard, I'll be sharing my time with Deborah Chase, CEO at Mount Lion Foundation. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak today. And I commend you and your staff for your perseverance navigating this very trying time right now. And thank you to department staff and to Esther for all your work to present this excellent presentation and provide a recommendation, which we strongly support. As the petitioners, we'd like to explain how we came up with the proposed ESU boundary and what CESA protections could look like. But first, I'd like to remind everyone of the standards under CESA and reiterate some of the things that President Clark and Dir Director Bonham mentioned. So today's vote is based on whether listing may be warranted. This determination is based on a reasonable person standard. Given both the department and commission staff have concluded that listing may be warranted, a negative vote today would equate to a determination that both the department's and commission staff's recommendations are not reasonable. Moreover, the decision is supposed to be based solely on science, not on policy implications. So while there may be substantial disagreement as to what the repercussions of listings might be, there is no credible dispute as to the science regarding the species imperilment. Lastly, CESA provides for both threatened and endangered listing, as well as, listing, as, well as for listing in a subset of a species range in California. Importantly, a threatened species is not currently in danger of extinction, but likely to become so in the foreseeable future without improved management. California lions aren't threatened or endangered statewide, but they're clearly imperiled in the southern and central coast portion of their range. We're therefore only seeking threatened species protection for an ESU comprised of these most imperiled populations. Okay, next slide. So as you know, scientists have identified 10 genetically distinct populations throughout California, likely to, uh, formed from habitat loss and fragmentation, and that black line is our proposed DSU boundary with those six populations. Next slide. And so considering that populations with an effective population size less than 50 are at high risk of extinction, you can see on the table that five of the six populations within the proposed DSU are dangerously low, and that sixth population is just barely at the minimum threshold. For comparison, the effective population size of the Western Sierra Nevada population, which is a relatively healthier population outside the proposed DSU area, it's, one, it's 157. Next slide. Now, if looked at in isolation, some populations, like the Santa Monica and Santa Ana lions, would clearly qualify as endangered. However, unlike other instances of ESU protections, in which the goal is to preserve the genetic uniqueness of a single population, to save these mountain lions, we need to improve gene flow among the population. In other words, we can't conserve them in isolation. That's why we decided to group the six populations into one ESU and seek threatened status. Next slide. 
The long-term survival of these populations relies on our ability to improve gene flow statewide. So that area circled in red um, has been identified by scientists as a critical area of genetic mixing between coastal, southern, and northern California lions. So for management purposes, we felt it was important to include this area in the proposed VSU as well. Next slide. And as you've heard, these mountain lions are facing an extinction vortex with numerous threats. Next slide. And, and the primary driver is lack of connectivity. All right, next slide. So existing laws and land use practices aren't enough to sustain healthy populations. Prop 117 has banned sport hunting mountain lions since 1990, and yet some California populations have lower survival rates than many hunted populations. And roads and development continue to fragment mountain lion habitat with little consideration of their, move of their movement needs. Next slide. Uh, but it's not too late. CESA protections could help us reconnect these populations. If listed, local authorities would need to coordinate with state wildlife experts to ensure that approved development projects account for mountain lion connectivity. State agencies could build wildlife crossings and conserve habitat adjacent to freeways. As Drs. Winston Vickers and Chris Wilmers can attest, wildlife crossings combined with protected land on both sides of a highway are sorely needed to improve connectivity. Such crossings have been shown to help maintain wildlife movement and reduce wildlife vehicle collisions. State officials could reevaluate the use of deadly rodenticides in mountain lion habitat, and CDFW could develop and implement a mountain lion recovery plan. Although CISA listing would not directly impact the issuance of depredation permits, a recovery plan could include guidance on non-lethal deterrence methods to reduce livestock conflicts and increase public safety in open space. Um, next slide. There's a lot of support for California lions. Almost 100 organizations who represent millions of members throughout the state support CISA protection, supported CISA protections in an April 10th coalition letter. And with that, I'll pass the mic to Deborah. Thank you. Thank you, Tiffany. Deborah, go ahead, please. Thank you, Tiffany. And thank you, commissioners and CDFW staff. I'm Deborah Chase, CEO of the Mount Lions Foundation. Since California voters passed Prop 117 in 1990 to the day last year that P-56 was killed, to the morning, Director Bonham stated, it's not the lion's fault, they're just trying to make their way. California has led the nation in protecting America's lions. We know it hasn't been easy. A lot of sleepless nights and long days been trying to protect creatures most of us will never see in the wild. And we do this because we know that when apex predators drive, ecosystems drive. If we lose the Mount Lion, we lose an iconic contributor to our native landscape. My team and I don't just work in California. We work hard to save America's lion in the 16 states that still have them. Throughout America, this iconic species is struggling to simply make a life for itself. Humans have shoved lions out of their habitat, shot and killed them for sports, spread their denticides throughout their food chain, demonized them for taking unprotected livestock and collided with them on their ever busier roadways all while this native animal loses precious habitat to development. Today, the commission can take a justified and necessary step on behalf of California's lions to ensure they continue to exist. California's southern and central coast lions are really threatened and on the brink of extinction. The science on this is strong. In the midst of the world's sixth great extinction, by taking the next step toward protecting these iconic cats, you will help save not just lions, but the multitudes of animal and plant species that depend on them. As stated by the legislative leaders who wrote to you, conserving mountain lions could help galvanize a modern landscape scale approach to habitat connectivity in California, while the elimination of these iconic cats could lead to further ecosystem degradation and biodiversity decline. That potential for ecosystem degradation is something none of us would want. Whether you're a city dweller or a rancher in a vast rural landscape, that level of degradation would adversely affect us all. There may appear to be opposing interests here, but we all want the same thing. We want California to continue to have open space, beautiful grasslands and forests, clean air and water, and an abundance of diverse wildlife. We want to be able to tell our children a story of inspiration, a story of how we save the lion, not a story of how we watch them die. The foundation is eager to work with anyone who is interested on a meaningful path to lion recovery, and we are committed to the kind of deep collaboration that will require. We can't undo an extinction, but we can all change our behavior to help our wildlife coexist with us. Please vote yes today for us and for all who come after us. Thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, appreciate both your presentations. Um, Lauren, can you tell me how many people have, their, have raised their hand? We currently have, uh, sorry, it keeps jumping, 12, 13. Okay, okay. I need 17 colleagues in the queue. Okay, I need to lower all their hands, please, for me. Can you, can you do that? Absolutely. Okay, do that. And then everybody, please do not press pound two. We're going to let several public officials speak first. I'm going to ask them to raise their hand after Lauren has lowered everybody else's. We appreciate your will, will, desire to jump the gun, but the public is going to wait just a few minutes. We're going to call on three uh, statewide elected officials, a couple of local officials, and then we'll go to everybody else. But we need to let these folks who are in the middle of all kinds of budget meetings and other emergency meetings go first and speak. Um, so, uh, Lauren, has everybody's hand been let, lowered? Yes. Okay, I'm now going to ask for three people. Senator Henry Stern, Assemblymember Richard Bloom, and former Senator Fran Pavley to raise their hands by pressing pound two just once. If I see more than three, then we're going to, when we get to you, if you're not a, one of those three people, we're going to cut you off and let you speak a little bit later. So give them a second there. So I'm hoping those three people can raise their hands by pressing pound two. Lauren, are we seeing hands go up? We currently have two hands in the queue. Okay, let's let the first three one now. open up and see who it is. Hello? Hi, it's Richard Bloom. Hi, Assemblymember Bloom. Great to have you on. Thank you. Please go ahead. Thank you, and good afternoon, President Sklar, members of the Commission, and Director Bonham. Uh, I, I'm the Assembly member from District 50 based in Santa Monica. I also chair the Assembly Budget Subcommittee for Resources and Transportation. And my district encompasses much of the Santa Monica Mountains and much of the area that has been at the epicenter of mountain lion casualties. The unique and beloved population of mountain lions in my district are, in fact, on the brink of extinction. So I was pleased to join with other colleagues in the legislature to submit a letter to you in support of the proposed action today because California Endangered Species Act protections for Southern California and Central Coast mountain lions cannot come soon enough, in my opinion. Scientists believe that these imperiled animals, especially those in my area, could disappear within our lifetime. They're fast approaching extinction due to habitat loss and fragmentation, genetic isolation, vehicle strikes, rodenticide poisoning, depredation kills, poaching, disease, and the increasing impact of climate change. I've been working on all of these issues for many years now with mixed success, but those efforts will continue the urgency of the threat to our mountain lions, though, demands that we do more to protect them now. And it's not too late to save them. The ESA protection would help prioritize recovery efforts and galvanize a modern landscape scale approach to habitat connectivity in California and increase conservation management tools, giving these animals a fighting chance at survival. I strongly recommend that you vote today to advance this petition to list all mountain lion populations in the proposed evolutionary significant unit as threatened under CESA, thereby initiating a full status review of the species and providing vital interim protections as a candidate species. There is ample evidence via the well-documented petition and staff report that we just heard a summary of to make a determination that the proposed action is warranted. I look forward to continuing to work with the commission and the department on other measures like the Liberty Canyon Wildlife Crossing, which is in my district, and on reducing the lethal impact that rodenticides are having on wildlife through my legislation, AB 1788. Thank you again uh, for making time for me to speak today. Great. Thank you, Assemblymember Blumen. Thank you for your leadership. We, we always uh, are, are honored to work with you on protecting California's native heritage and wildlife. And so thank you very much for joining us today. Um, Lauren, can you open the next speaker, please? You're welcome. Next speaker, and speak when you hear the tone. Hello? Yes, this is uh, Fran Pavley. Oh, okay. Hi, Senator Pavley. Great to have you on the line. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, President Sklar and Commissioners and Director Bonham um, for putting this on the agenda. Really appreciate it down here. Uh, I'm testifying in support of the CESA petition 
and the department's recommendation that the commission determine that there is sufficient scientific information available that the petition for action may be warranted as required by your legal standards. Your commission has a thoughtful and comprehensive one-year review process before you make your final decision, and I'd like to clarify that for the public. Um, today's LA Times editorial stated, there is no question the commission should vote to study whether to list the lions. I agree. I served 14 years in the legislature and was a four-term local government official right here in Agora Hills. In fact, yesterday, the mayor of Agora Hills sent me a copy of the city's letter in support of the petition. You should have received it. I have been following the challenges mountain lions are facing in our region for decades. And it's due to an increasingly urban landscape, exposure to rat poison, habitats bisected by freeways, which we are working to fix with crossing, genetic inbreeding, along with the growing impacts of climate change. Many studies have been done by park officials, biologists, and local universities on our mountain lion population and the challenges they face, especially including the growing concern of the loss of genetic diversity. Frankly, I'm concerned we may be running out of time. I look forward to the completion of your report and your commission's final decision. Thank you very much for allowing me to testify today. Thank you, Senator Pavley, and thank you, too, for your incredible leadership on, on protecting this species. The overpass that's uh, in process is, is, is in large part because of your efforts, and, we, and everybody appreciates that very much. Thank you for calling in today. Um, and with that, I'd like to bring in the next speaker. Hopefully, it's uh, Senator Henry Stern. Lauren, please open the next mic. Hello, go ahead. Hello? Check to make sure you don't have your mic uh, muted, your phone muted. Hi. This is Linda Park, Center County Supervisor. May okay, I we're going to let you go ahead, but uh, go ahead, please. Thank you. Welcome, Supervisor. Thank you. Thank you. Citizens in Ventura County really value our natural resources and their protection, and particularly endangered and threatened species, and specifically our region's mountain lion. Our Board of Supervisors have voted to support the listing of the mountain lions in our region for protection. And also local cities, our state representatives, and as was mentioned by Fran, our, the Los Angeles Times have all weighed in in support of the listing of the California endangered species. We know that new research has shown that our local mountain lions will be extinct within 15 years if we don't act. And because of that, our Board of Supervisors passed a resolution proclaiming that Santa Monica mountain lions, they need to be uh, listed and have expanded protections, including we are hopeful um, to the elimination of depredation permits in those cases where mountain lions take pets or livestock. And we hope that by listing them, you will also consider uh, eliminating that reason for a depredation permit. Our county has also adopted a first-of-its-kind wildlife corridor zone to prevent blocking off the critical corridors and habitats so mountain lions that do cross the freeways can traverse through those corridors and get from the Santa Monica Mountains to the Cine Hills and on to the Los Padres Forests. We voted unanimously to support the wildlife bridge at Liberty Canyon that we hope will be built soon. And we have also eliminated county use of anticoagulant rodenticides to protect the species from poisoning and hope that this listing will also lead to the elimination of anticoagulant rodenticides um, in our state. I thank you for your consideration of this. Our Board of Supervisors uh, approved a letter which you received, a letter of April 6th that uh, I'll refer you to. And thank you so much for your support for this. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Park, for calling in. Uh, Lauren, how many speakers do we have holding now? We have uh, three. 
uh, the call is jumping up again. We are. Okay, well, go, yeah, go, go ahead. Go ahead and do the next one. Let's see who we are. Let's see who we got. All right. And while you're Please go that, ahead. Next speaker, are you there? Hello. Hi, this is Judy. Hi, this is Judy Mancuso. Can you hear me? But I think you are waiting yes. for Henry oh, Stern. Judy, we're not. Judy, we're not taking the public yet. Please press. Uh, please uh, disconnect this. We'll have you try again in a little bit. Not yet, please. Thank you. Next uh, speaker, please. Okay, got it. This one. Caller, go, go ahead. ahead. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I'm, I also am not Henry. <laughs> okay, um, please disconnect this one. We'll, we'll we'll come back to you later. Don't please do not press pound two unless I've called your name. Thank you. Next caller, please, uh, L L Lauren. Yeah, yeah I'm not Henry Stern either. Hey, disconnect. Hello? Next one. Lauren, next one. I've opened the next line. Hello. Please be sure you've not self-muted. Hello, next caller. Hello, we can hear you, go ahead. Hello. Hi. Uh, you're waiting for Henry Stern. I'm just a general public member. Okay, please disconnect this one. We'll, we'll ha please do not press pound two unless you're Henry Stern. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, next, next one, Lauren, please. Hello. Caller, please go. Hi, this is not Henry Stern. Do you, do you want me to speak? <laughs> no, thank you. We're, we're going to have you hold. Hello? We're going we're gonna to put. We're going to lower your hand for you, and then we're going to have. And then we're, you can come back later when we call on the public. Uh, Lauren, next one, please. The next line has been opened. Next one. Uh, okay. Are you there, please? Hello. Hello. Your phone may be muted. Um, please uh, unmute and speak. Hello. All right. I'm going to remove everyone currently in the queue and see if we can just get uh, Senator Henry Stern in. Okay. Nobody but Henry Stern press pound two. Everybody's being Taking, having their hands lowered by Lauren and Henry, we'd like you to one time again, wait one second, I'll tell you when, and then we'd like you to push pound two again. And only one number should pop up. I'm not seeing any callers coming to the queue. Okay. I'm texting them now. We've just had one, one hand okay. raised. Bring up, please see if it's Henry. Hello? I am so sorry. This is Henry Stern. <laughs> that I is really Barry, good I just, to hear your voice. It is, no, I, it's a model in how not to be a leader when you make everyone else wait for you to figure out how to work a teleconference. So uh, next time, put me last because that's where I deserve to go. Thank you to the advocates who have called in and been relentless about this, uh, the legend, Fran Tavley, and President Squar, and Director Bonham, and everyone at the commission for working so hard. Outstanding staff report. The science is so solid. The frustration is the, the length of the, of, the, of the listing process and then the speed of biology right now really working against us. And so I wholeheartedly um, endorse and, and encourage you all to, to move forward with the candidacy uh, investigation process, and uh, that status investigation, uh, we worry won't come quickly enough. 
Um, so to everyone on the line who, who believes we can't wait, um, we're going to need uh, more than this. And I'm very excited to hear also from Director Bonham about how we, we look at the, the massive development push that's going to be going on in our region and how to square that with our love of wildness in our lives. And these lions represent not just an apex predator that's critical to the biology and the diversity of our habitat, but something more that says we can live as modern people zipping around in cars and moving in our fast lives and still leave room for nature. You know, COVID has given us a pause, and it's strange how nature has started to catch up. But I don't think these lions have enough momentum right now to catch up like we've seen the bears do in Yosemite or other species with the, the volume that we need. So your action today is urgently needed, and more than that, uh, AB 1788, Assemblymember Bloom's legislation we've been working on, we've got to get that done, and we've got to work on a comprehensive mechanism for planning and funding wildlife corridors even as we limp through this recession or even depression. You know, nature will not wait for these crises we're in. So I thank you for your consideration, and mostly thank you uh, to everyone who's not Henry Stern on the call. So, okay. Thank you, Senator Stern. Really appreciate your patience and appreciate your leadership. It's always great working with you, and we will continue to do so for this species, but all, for all the wildlife in California. Thank you so much for calling in. Um, now I would like to, there's two last public officials I want to call on. Uh, uh, their staff members are Candace uh, uh, Medigan and Andy Schrader. Only those two people or their bosses would I like. Uh, oh, Candace, I'm sorry. Candace's boss already did speak. I'm sorry. It's actually um, Paul Koritz and Andy uh, and, and Andrea Gugula, who I, I'd like to call on. If, if you heard your name called, please raise your hand now. Only those two people by pressing pound two. If, any, if we get more than a couple, then we're going to go through the same thing again. So please, just those two people, raise your hand by pressing pound two. And uh, Lauren, tell me if you see somebody. We do have a couple of callers in the queue. Okay, let's let's try them out. Caller, please go ahead. Uh, be sure you have not self-muted. Hello, speaker, go ahead. Yes, you're on. Go ahead, please. We can try the next line. Hello. Oh, oh yeah, we can hear you now. Hello? Go ahead, please. please. Please speak. Who, me? Should I go ahead? Yes. Yep, go ahead. Oh, okay, yes. Um, thank you so much um, for giving me an opportunity to speak. Um, I'm Mindy Mann. I am with the Benedict Canyon Association. Um, as well as the Neighborhood Council, and uh, both of us uh, sent in letters of support. Um, personally, I've lived in the Santa Monica Mountains for almost 40 years. Um, during that time, I have lived here. I've uh, sadly seen our mountain lion population dwindle due to habitat loss and um, fragmentation, vehicle accidents, and increased wildfires. And uh, sadly, most recently, we had one of our two remaining male collared mountain lions killed under the depredation rule. Um, our mountain lions need protection, and they need it now. And I love the uh, line I just heard from Senator Stern, that nature will not wait. Um, he's absolutely right. Um, it is in your hands to secure the future in our region, so I urge you to give consideration to protecting our mountain lions under CESA before it's too late. Uh, thank you so much. Okay, Laura, next speaker, please. Sorry. Good afternoon, President and Commissioners. Thank you for the opportunity to comment on this important item. I very much appreciate the amazing environmental you leaders who came before me. I'm Andy Schrader, Director of Environmental Affairs for LA City Council Member Paul Koretz, who Great. represents 250,000 people in Los Angeles, and of course the City Council represents the 4 million people who reside in Los Angeles. Uh, I just was saying I, am, I very much appreciate the amazing environmental leaders who came before. Assemblymember Bloom, Senator Pavley, Senator Stern, and Supervisor Parks. 
uh, LA City Council members Paul Koretz and David Rue, who together represent a large portion of the Los Angeles hillside communities on February 11th of this year, introduced a resolution to the City Council calling for the state to take three actions, including to list the Southern California Central Coast mountain lions as threatened or endangered under the California Endangered Species Act. Uh, I sent you the resolution to be included in the official record. The City of Los Angeles has recognized its own responsibility in what we've been hearing, hearing about, our current wildlife and biodiversity crisis, and has stepped up its efforts to protect natural resources through its biodiversity and wildlife habitat connectivity initiatives, recognizing that the health of human beings is directly related to the health of the natural world. For just one example, when our famous Griffith Park mountain lion, P-22, broke into the LA Zoo and ate up one of the koala bears, Angelinos weren't mad. They rose up instead in support of P-22. The city did not apply for a deprivation permit. It paid instead to replace its koala bear, and most importantly, it increased its own security mountain lion out. We like to think of those measures as best practices and would encourage others to follow suit. We support the staff report to determine that listing the southern and central coast mountain lions may be warranted. This listing would give the city more tools with which to see its biodiversity and wildlife habitat connectivity initiatives come to strong fruition. And we support taking every action necessary to protect them and thereby to protect us all. Thank you. Okay, great, thank you. I, um, at this point, I'm going to open this up to the public at large. You do this by pressing pound two. Just do it once. You do it twice, you lower your hand. You press pound two, and then we're going to open one mic at a time. You'll hear a message saying your mute mic is unmuted when you're, it's your turn, and we want you to start speaking right away by naming, giving us your name, ideally, and if any affiliation you have. I'm going to give people just a minute to get started on that, and then I'm going to ask Lauren for how many people we have. If you want to speak, you need to press pound two now. We're not going to let people just keep adding on and adding on at the end um, as they decide to speak because it's not really fair to the management of this process. Um, but anybody who does press pound two now will get to speak. Um, we're going to allow one minute per speaker, maybe more if, uh, if only a few people put their hands up. We'll see what it looks like in a minute. We are already at 39 speakers in the queue. Okay, so it is, going to be one, it is going to be one minute per speaker, and we ask you to be concise. We also ask you that if you're repeating what somebody else, we're going to repeat what somebody's already said, you can simply say, I endorse what was said by the previous speaker or by a certain speaker, and, uh, and that's enough. We, you know, we, don't, we don't, need to, don't necessarily need to hear the same thing over and over. What we want to know is hear how many people feel the same way. So I'd encourage you to use that process in respect of everybody's time. Um, uh, uh, Lauren, how many people do we have now? 45, 46. Okay. Um, We're gonna... Yep. Sorry, go ahead. Yes, you go ahead. No, it's okay. Uh, I was just going to say, um, I thought we had another hand, but we're still at 46. And how many people do we have on the call? 85, 86. Okay. All right. Open the first mic, please. And again, uh, be concise. Say your name. Give us your position. And uh, leave time for everybody else. Thank you. Hello. My name is yep. uh, Beth Pratt, and I want to thank uh, to the Commission and to Director Bonin for considering this vital matter, especially during this challenging time. Um, I am the Executive Director for the National Wildlife Federation in California. I also lead the Save the Lake Cougars campaign to build the wildlife crossing at Liberty Canyon you've heard about, and I'm speaking on behalf of 6 million members nationwide. Um, I also have the honor of being the voice of P22 on Facebook, so I'm speaking on his behalf here as well. He sends his regards and strongly urges you to vote yes, or you can consider Griffith Park off limits for now. <laughs> um, but today, real quickly, I was thinking of another uh, California celebrity animal, OR7, with news of his likely passing. And this commission voted in 2012 in a visionary vote to bring protections to a predator long lost um, before they even took up permanent residence in the state. And to me, this vote is just as significant. Uh, this is about not losing one of our irreplaceable animals, the mountain lion. The world is watching us. We are setting a global model for coexistence, such as building the largest wildlife crossing in the world. But mountain lions are still being hit by cars, poisoned to death. And when one of only two known males in a threatened population can be killed just for a few goats, we need to take action. It doesn't have to be a trade-off, though. We can coexist with housing, agriculture, and all. 
if we can build a crossing and keep 400,000 people on a, uh, a road, the 101 driving on it, we can find measures to coexist with agriculture, with housing and everything. And NWF is committed to educating and, and funding measures necessary to coexist to make that happen. The scientific reasons are compelling and valid, and both myself and my organization, National Wildlife Federation, believe this is warranted for further consideration. But I will conclude with a non-scientific reason. It's the right thing to do. As others have noted, these cats are running out of time, and we don't want them to disappear on our watch. The majority of Californians want these animals on the landscape because we value them solely for the wildness they connect us to. Director Bonham Commission, you've showed leadership in protecting our wild heritage continually. I thank you in advance for showing leadership here and advancing these threatened populations of mountain lions for consideration for final candidacy. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. Appreciate that. And uh, with that, we are going on to the rest of the public and one minute each. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon. Thank you for allowing me to make remarks today. I am Heather Maynard, a scientist, a professor at UCLA, and a resident of Los Angeles. I'm calling to provide my strongest support for listing mountain mount mines as endangered in the California Endangered Act. I'm pleased to hear so much support today of listing the mountain mines as endangered and support um, it, all that has been said so far. The bottom line is these animals are endangered. Science, science supports this, and every moment the mountain list pushes them closer to extinction. I personally think a year of deliberation is too long. And so uh, protecting these animals can be done while allowing building to address our homeless crisis and also protecting farmers and their animals. This is not mutually exclusive. It's really our duty as citizens to protect them, and you have the opportunity to, today to advance this proposal towards protection, which I hope you will take. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hello, President Scalon, Commissioners. My name is Tony Tucci, and I'm Chairperson of Citizens for Los Angeles Wildlife, or CLAW for short. We're a nonprofit focused on protecting wildlife and their habitat within the Los Angeles area. And on February 14th, we submitted written support, but as some time has passed, we'd like now to make some brief public comments. So many people think of Los Angeles as a network of freeways, and they would forget that we have the vast Santa Monica Mountains running through the heart of our city. It's a mountain lion habitat mountain range. And since the early 1900s, mountain lions have always been coexisting with us in this region. And over the years, generations of ghost cats have quietly witnessed the urban development of hillsides and communities such as Pacific Palisades, Bel Air, Beverly Hills, Hollywood, etc. And we at CLAW interface with many residents of these hillside communities and find that Angelinos overwhelmingly support coexisting with a thriving mountain lion population. The cats are not only a part of our city's natural heritage, but a critical element of our healthy ecosystem. And whether they remain a part of LA or suffer extirpation, it depends on your vote today. So given that so much data shows these subpopulations as threatened, we, we urge you to support moving forward on the petition with an I vote today to grant candidacy of CSUB protection. And we thank you for making this important decision. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller, please. Yes, my name is Kirk Wilbur. I'm with the California Cattlemen's Association. Uh, we ask today that you find the petition does not provide sufficient information to indicate the petition action may be warranted. Uh, the law requires such a determination. To be clear, if you find today that listing may be warranted, you'll be in violation of Section 4800B, which explicitly states that neither the Commission nor the Department shall adopt any regulation that conflicts with or supersedes the provision of Proposition 117. As we've outlined in our past letters and our April 2nd letter, uh, these take prohibitions under CESA and candidacy uh, would violate at least four take provisions of Proposition 117, violating Section 4800B. I appreciate Director Bonham's comments that the Department would seek to harmonize CESA and Proposition 117, but I'm not confident that would in fact be the case. First, I direct you to pages 10 through 12 of our April 2nd letter, which outlines why CESA and Prop 17 cannot be harmonized. And secondly, I note that the Department is already failing to uphold its obligations under Proposition 117. Under its three strikes policy, the department has issued non-take permits for hazing only in violation of section 4803 codified by Proposition 117. Commissioners, even if you believe that listing may be warranted, by approving Proposition 117, California voters explicitly took that decision out of your hand. Only the legislature or the voters via a new proposition may extend these protections to mountain lions. 
Again, we ask that you uphold Proposition 117 today and make a determination that the petition does not provide sufficient information to indicate that the petition to action may be warranted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. President Scalar, Commissioners, my name is Bryant Baker, and I'm the Conservation Director for Los Padres Forest Watch, a nonprofit organization based in Santa Barbara that has over 18,000 members and supporters. Uh, we work to protect wildlife and habitats throughout the Central Coast region. Uh, we strongly urge the Commission to accept the petition for co consideration and give the Central Coast and Southern California ESU candidate status. status. Um, mountain lines in the Central Coast region where our organization is based uh, have experienced major pressures over the past few decades. Urban and suburban sprawl as well as agricultural development has caused significant habitat fragmentation throughout the region. Uh, this expansion into wildlands has also led to more interactions between landowners and mountain lions, which often leads to issuance of depredation permits. This is especially true in places like San Luis Obispo County, which ranks sixth in the state in terms of number of mountain lions killed under depredation permits over the past two decades. Uh, researchers have found that the Central Coast uh, South subpopulation has the lowest effective population size of any in the state and is at severe risk of inbreeding due to genetic isolation. The Central Coast Central subpopulation, while containing more breeding adults than elsewhere in the region, is still at significant risk of declines in inbreeding due to its effective population size that is 10 times lower than the threshold for long-term viability. And if you look at more recent research, it may be actually be uh, almost 20 times lower than the threshold for long-term population Thank viability. You, Thank you, uh, So, you want to wrap up? again, we urge you to advance this petition, um, and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hello, this is Wyatt MG, representing Marine Outdoors and Petaluma Outdoorsman. We are asking you that this uh, does not warrant a listing to be endangered. Our concerns is, one, taxpayer burden, because, uh, you know, no uh, prep deprivation permits, farmers will still have livestock loss and taxpayers will most likely be liable, uh, possibly by suit, um, et cetera. Also, this stops the expansion of affordable housing in certain areas. Right now, that is a big issue in California as our population increases, not just in Southern California, but also in Lower Bay Area. Um, also, we would like to say that this data would um, pretty much be looking at specific uh, populations, but would uh, would be over a larger range. So we don't think it warrants um, that much uh, of a range. Thank you for letting me speak, and uh, thank you for the commission doing their job. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hi, my name is Faye Van Dierbrook, and um, I'm a wildlife photographer from Berkeley, California, and I just wanted to thank you for um, considering what's being done um, to the mountain lions in California. Um, I feel like we do have a duty to protect these individuals from further harm, and I strongly support having mountain lions considered for protection. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon, President Sklar. This is Jennifer Fearing, and um, on behalf of the Co-Petitioner Mountain Foundation, who I'm very fortunate to work with, I just want to echo Deborah's gratitude to the department, the commission staff, and to Director Bonham for all your all the careful consideration and thoughtfulness that's gone into this process. And I also wanted to express on behalf of the San Francisco SPCA and the San Diego Humane Society, who are both leading animal welfare organizations operating within the proposed ESU, we, we, all, we want to also convey our strong support of the petition and urge you to vote to advance the Southern California and Central California Alliance to candidate status. Thank you. Next. Okay. Thank you. Next speaker, please. President Scalar, Commissioners, Director Bonham. I'm Gary Brennan, President of San Diego County Wildlife Federation. State's been dealing with mountain lion population, both good and bad, since Prop 17, was even before that, in 1990. Uh, studies have been going on for decades. For as long as I've been in California, the department has been saying the population of lions in California approximately 4,000 to 6,000. But we're trying to pass more and more laws, including the addition of the CISA regarding the mountain lion without knowing two things how many mountain lions are actually in California, and more importantly, due to lions' large territorial range, what are the habitats carrying capacities for lions in the various population regions throughout California? 
Uh, the Federation does support SB 1372 currently in San Diego, uh, Sacramento regarding the wildlife quarters and conductivity. And the San Diego County Wildlife Federation would like to see the answers to the two questions I've raised before we add our support or opposition to place uh, an already specially protected species under CESA. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your <laughs> cooperation throughout the week, or at least the last two days. And uh, that's all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Next speaker, please. Hi, good afternoon. Can you hear me? We, we can. When you hear, hear uh, your, mute is, uh, your mic is unmuted, just go ahead. Okay, wonderful. All right. Um, good afternoon, President Squire and members of the commission. My name is Sabrina Ashton, and I am the California State Director for the Humane Society of the United States. I am providing these comments on behalf of the Humane Society of the United States and Humane Society Veterinary Medical Association. As detailed in our earlier submitted letter by the Humane Society to California Department of Fish and Game Commission and the California Department of Fish and Wildlife, we believe mountain lions in the proposed ESU are in need of protection under CESA because of increasing threats to their survival in the region. Additionally, CDFW believes there is sufficient scientific information to indicate that the petitioned action may be warranted. Therefore, we ask that you please vote in favor of allowing the department to move forward with the one-year status review. Thank you for your consideration and for all of your great work. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Hello? Yes, go ahead, please. Hi, um, I'm Julie Walbrep, and I'm a healthcare worker for the last 15 years and an animal advocate, um, and I strongly support adopting the recommend recommendations made today. A reason often used to justify humans killing deer is that they're overpopulated, but they wouldn't be if we didn't destroy the natural ecosystem by destroying the habitats of and directly killing their natural predators like wolves and mountain lions. Habitats often destroyed to raise animals for humans to eat, to kill and eat unnecessarily, and to grow massive amounts of crops to feed those animals. With the growing likelihood of increasing frequency and severity of consequences from climate change, which we're doing very little to stop, drought, fire, floods, disease, etc., the mountain lion's chance of surviving is only likely to naturally decrease without mandated protection. Please protect them with CISA as soon as possible and pass more measures to reduce the damage that humans have done to animals and the natural beauty of California. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hi, this is Susie Boyd. I'm Public Policy Coordinator with Mojave Desert Land Trust. And our organization would like to express support for granting candidate status for the mountain lions under CESA. Uh, the main uh, uh, source that we're citing is a 2019 study led by John Benson with scientists from the National Park Service, from UC Davis, from UCLA, that was peer-reviewed studied in ecological applications. They modeled the processes that continued to extinction, and that extinction risk is much higher for small isolated populations such as the ones that we're speaking about today. So on that basis of the, uh, the risk being very high, and yet there's very little in place to protect them from the bulk of their threats that we've already um, discussed here, we would like to express our support for granting them candidate status. And thank you so much for taking this issue up. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Hi, this is Frank Angel. I'm uh, an attorney who represented the Sierra Club and other organizations in the Malibu Santa Monica Mountains to uh, protect uh, core habitat, and we succeeded in protecting uh, thousands of acres of core habitat uh, in the Santa Monica Mountains National Recreation Area. And what prompted me to speak up is the last depredation permit, which was uh, one step prior to far, that was issued uh, to the Ombudsman Ranch in Ventura County, uh, one of these four ranches um, that could very well have protected the wildlife, uh, or excuse me, their uh, their livestock, uh, and that led to a, a completely erroneously um, issued uh, depredation permit. There are avoidable causes uh, that the listing um, will be now uh, a 
eliminating, and, and those are rodenticide, anticoagulants, depredation permits, and then there remains the problem of poaching that I'm still very, um, very worried about. So my point is, uh, we protected a lot of open space habitat, wildlife habitat linkages, and they should not be empty. The uh, mountain lion population in the Malibu San Juan Mountain is one family um, inbred. And sir, not, sir, really your, the sir your one minute is up. Can you wrap up, please? So I, I urge the commission uh, to find that CBD's petition uh, to list the Central and Southern California um, Evolutionary Significant Unit of the Mountain Lion as an endangered species under okay. the California Thank Endangered you. Species Act does provide Thank evidence you. to indicate. Thank you, sir. Next speaker, please, Lauren. Hi, this is Victoria from Victoria Gu from Compassion Bay. We are an extensive grassroots network in the San Francisco Bay Area. We're in strong support. And Californians take pride in our national parks and generally the preservation of our natural ecosystems. So we need to protect mountain lions and assert that they do have the right to their habitat over the profit-driven interests of cattle ranchers and other industries. So this is the right thing to do. Great. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Um, good afternoon. My name is Rita Mitchell. I'm calling from Long Beach. Um, I strongly, strongly recommend that the California Fish and Game Commission list the lion population, the mountain lion populations in Central and Southern California as a state endangered species, which is what they are. They are just being squeezed from every, I, you know, I don't want to reiterate everything that the wonderful speakers have just stated. I just hope you guys do the right thing and try to save such an iconic and biologically important predator species. Like so many other people have stated, if we hadn't killed off so many of them, there wouldn't be such huge deer herds and therefore, you know, that's where all the hunters, what they want to do is shoot at them. But uh, I think the cougars, the lion, mountain lions, should have first choice at these uh, deers, not the hunters. And that's my comment. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. My name is Claire Schlotterbeck. I'm executive director of Hills for Everyone, the group that founded Chino Hills State Park. We also led the successful multi-county bipartisan effort to preserve the Coal Canyon Wildlife Corridor under the 91 Freeway in Anaheim in 2000, connecting our hills to the Santa Ana Mountains. This was the first time in state park history that land was purchased solely for its connectivity value. Without this crossing, cougars and other wildlife would have become isolated in the Plenty Chino Hills and would eventually die out due to inbreeding. The rare significant public investment in conservation in our four county region of Southern California would have been lost without the crossing. It could still be lost if the cougar does not receive stronger protection. We encourage you to approve the petition to lift the Southern California Central Coast Ecologically Separate Unit of the Mountain Lion as a threatened species under CESA. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Hi, my name is Kelly Hendricks, and I'm the Ranching with Wildlife Coordinator for Project Coyote. I'll be quick here, but I just wanted to speak today as a rancher. Um, my husband has managed the cow-calf operation in California for over 25 years, and our cows graze on lands with mountain lions and other predators, and we value them for the ecological benefits they bring to our ranch lands. So this is why we fully support listing the mountain lions. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon. Thank you, President Sklar and Commission members for this opportunity to comment. My name is Sophia Afikoa with the Planning Conservation League, and we strongly support listing the mountain lion species under the California Endangered Species Act. Mountain lions are under the threat of extinction within the next 15 to 50 years if nothing is done to protect the species. Listing the species of the under CESA would benefit California ecosystems and biodiversity as the species is the last large predator left in California and provides food and population control for other species in the region. Listing the species would also protect people from automobile collisions with wildlife as habitat connectivity will be improved. 
personally speaking, I wouldn't mind paying extra taxes to make sure that mountain lions are still around for my future children to see. Please protect this unique species for Californians and for future generations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker. Uh, good afternoon. This is Brandon Dawson, policy advocate for Sierra Club, California. Um, for the sake of brevity, I'll just say we support the um, consideration and the advancement of the petition, and we strongly attribute our comments to uh, that of Center for Biological Diversity. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Hello, this is Lisa Levinson speaking on behalf of In Defense of Animals an international animal protection nonprofit organization that's based in San Rafael, California, representing 250,000 worldwide supporters, with 59,000 of those supporters residing in California. We fully support the petition to list Southern California and Central Coast mountain lions as threatened under the State's Endangered Species Act. Almost 900 of our supporters in California signed a petition to this effect. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Hi, can you hear, hear me? Oh, sorry. Yes, we can. Please go ahead. Um, this is, okay, sorry. This is Judy Mancuso, Social Compassion and Legislation. And in 1990, Californians overwhelmingly per, uh, voted to protect the mountain lion. 30 years later, we haven't accomplished that through so-called management programs. Hunters and ranchers continue to kill. Three strikes has been an absolute debacle. It's been a license to kill. Now we need to draw the line once and for all and protect the same lions we were supposed to protect 30 years ago. Time is up, and this is the only thing to do. And thank you to your staff that did a great job and for uh, anticipating your yes vote on this today. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Uh, good afternoon, President Sklar, Commissioners, Director, Director Bonham. Uh, my name is Neil Desai. I represent the National Parks Conservation Association as our senior program director. I um, hope everyone on this call is, is well and staying healthy. Um, we strongly support the department's recommendation and the record before us that demonstrates that time is not on our side um, if we want to save these mountain lions. Um, and as Senator Pavley articulated, moving forward today simply ensures that this fact-finding process, this public process continues and allows for a future important um, decision to be made. Um, we see the department and this commission as essential partners. Uh, we greatly appreciate the recent letter from Director Bonham to members of the legislature, uh, reaffirming the department's um, support and commitment on protecting the mountain lion and in particular referencing this, pro referencing this process. Um, this science-based FISA process is exactly the right thing to advance here, one of the tools, the essential tools that you all have as part of our collective efforts, Senator Stern and Assemblymember Bloom highlighted the other incredibly important measures that, that we all must enact uh, to complement what's happening today, supervising Thank you. Parks, we to wrap up? Uh, local planning. Yeah, so thanks, thanks um, for your uh, commitment to tackling this challenge. All right, thank you, appreciate it. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon, my name is Pam Silkwood and I'm an attorney representing several ranchers and farmers in the Central Coast. Um, before you take action today, you must consider whether your action would unconstitutionally void a key component of Proposition 117, which is the expedited depredation permit process. Case law in interpreting Article 2, Section 10 of the California Constitution is clear. Such conduct to amend or void any of the provisions of an initiative passed by the electorate uh, is unconstitutional and thus void. 
your consideration of whether listing may be warranted should be based on the limitations of your authority uh, set forth under the California Constitution, which trumps your statutory authority under the Fish and Game Code. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hello. Uh, thank you, Commission. Uh, this is Winston Vickers. I'm a veterinary researcher, wildlife researcher uh, that's been studying mountain lions for many years. And uh, I just want to emphasize the, um, I, I, I want to encourage uh, the Commission to advance the petition to full uh, consideration by the Department. Uh, the department has excellent scientists uh, that can help make these determinations and the science that's still ongoing that can influence this uh, decision making in the end uh, is tending to reemphasize many of the points that have been made uh, in the petition so far. Uh, so I would just I like to uh, support the advancing from here to a full review. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon, President Sklar, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Cliff Moriyama, representing the California Building Industry Association. I'd just like to take this opportunity to uh, underscore our concerns with the petition as outlined in a, a coalition letter that we and other business organizations submitted earlier this month. Uh, as our members uh, try to meet the housing needs of all Californians, we are concerned with any regulatory activity that could impede their ability to, to meet those goals, especially those that were highlighted uh, by the governor. Uh, I did appreciate the reference to the housing and homeless crisis in California uh, by Director Bonham in his opening comments, and, uh, and do look forward to discussing how we can further engage on this issue with the Department and the Commission. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Next speaker, please. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Teresa Laura. I am calling as a member of the Center for Biological Diversity. I'm calling in favor of the petition. Uh, my family settled in California over 130 years ago, and in that time we've seen the extirpation of uh, several apex predators. Um, we must have apex predators, otherwise we will have ecosystem degradation. Uh, there's numerous uh, data out there and evidence out there that the mountain lions are headed towards an extinction vortex. Listing them um, as an endangered species would provide much needed mitigation measures to uh, prevent these mountain lions from going the way of the other apex predators and further damaging our ecosystem. Uh, thank you very much for allowing me time to speak and I strongly support this measure. Thank you. Appreciate it. Next speaker, please. Hello? Yes, go ahead, please. Hello? Yes, my name is Linda Waldrop, and I'm a longtime docent at the John Muir National Historic Site in Martinez. I welcome visitors from around the state, and I know that Californians very much value their wildlife heritage. So I am in, in favor of the ESA classification, and I thank you for letting me express my uh, opinion. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Next speaker, please. Hello, my name is Professor Catherine Maynard. I've written extensively on uh, wildlife diversity, and I strongly support the state endangered species listing for mountain lions in Southern California and Central Coast. Um, the uh, data presented by Esther, Tiffany, and Deborah was, was wonderful, and I encourage uh, there to be a look at data uh, from other states where they have wildlife crossings and tunnels and how these actually have increased uh, wildlife diversity and would help protect greatly the, um, the lions of Southern California. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Yeah, 
Yes, hello. I'm Simone Reyes. Um, I'm a country music artist, and I work with social compassion and legislation. As humans at large, we have declared war on so many animals, and it's time to put down our weapons. We've taken away their homes, their freedom to roam safely, and are moving in the wrong direction in so many ways. When a lion is killed, we risk having kittens suffer horrific starvation deaths. We lose mother lions who train their kittens to avoid people, as she has learned to do, and large and well-established males that have proved themselves able to survive against all odds. But mostly, each time we kill a lion or lift protections for them, we lose a little bit of what distinguishes us as humans, our capacity for compassion. Please help protect them. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, our next speaker, please. Good afternoon. My name is Sunshine Saldivar. I am counsel for the California Farm Bureau Federation, which represents over 35,000 growers and ranchers throughout the state. Um, we oppose the listing, the mountain lion under CESA, because we believe it would pose great legal and public policy concerns. Um, since some colleagues of mine already discussed some of the legal concerns, and in order to avoid repetition, I'll focus on some of the policy implications a listing would have on our members. Um, ultimately, the CESA listing would jeopardize ranchers' ability to protect their livestock, and it would threaten the viability of ranches. Mountain lions are significant predators of many farm and domestic animals but they are the second most prolific killers of cattle in California, killing 34.3% of all cattle killed by predators. Mountain lion depredations can be devastating for impacted ranchers. For instance, one rancher in Southern California lost 22 calves to two mountain lions between 2014 and 2016. Given the small profit margins of most cattle ranches, uh, such losses can jeopardize the continued viability of ranching, which has cascading impacts on rural economies. Ranchers are often diligent in implementing deterrence, but depredations still occur. I've personally sat in countywide meetings where up, ranchers please. are extremely frustrated. Yes, of course. Um, ultimately, if the mountain lion is regionally listed under CESA, these important protection provisions found in the Fish and Game Code would be threatened, if not eliminating, eliminated completely in the proposed region, leaving ranchers okay. and their animals Thank defenseless. you very much. With that, thank Appreciate you for this opportunity. All right, thank you. Laura, next speaker, please. Uh, good afternoon, President Sklar, uh, Commission members, Director Bonham. I'm Dan Silver, Endangered Habitats League, a Southern California conservation group. I'm here to support the petition because we have direct knowledge and experience of the loss of connectivity that the petition describes. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Next speaker, please. My name is Susan Zonter. I'm president of the Three Points Libre Mountain Town Council in the far northwestern portion of Los Angeles County, where several important mountain ranges and connectivity to habitat is, is important, but often ignored by local and regional officials who approve large, sprawling housing tracts. And for this reason, I believe it's important to support this action um, also, personally, I live in an area that is wild, where lions live, where deer live, and a variety of other, you know, uh, um, creatures. And I feel a personal responsibility to respect where I live and respect that I know lions live here. I'm extremely careful about what I do outdoors, and I know they're there. And I live with them, and I've been here 34 years, and I, I appreciate the fact that they're here. I enjoy deer in my yard. I, I've had livestock attacked by bobcats. Can I, uh, can I ask you to wrap up, please? Yes, of course. I, I agree with all of the other professional uh, scientists and um, commenters who support this, and so do I. Great. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Hi, I'm Katie Cleary, uh, President and Founder of World Animal News and Peace for Animals, and we reach millions of people around the world. Um, we've been covering this story for the last month. Um, I'm sure you guys have been getting a lot of calls in support of the protection of mountain lions under the California Endangered Species Act. Um, I'm currently looking at the Santa Monica Mountains right now, and I know, and it's very upsetting to know, that there's only six left 
an estimated six mountain lions left in the Santa Monica Mountains. We're risking these big cats, um, extinction of these big cats in the next five years, if not sooner, if we don't um, protect them like they should. Um, we're destroying our natural world. We're destroying their natural habitat. We need to coexist with these species. They're precious. And if they had a chance to speak, what would they want us to say? How would they want us to speak for them? And I think that they deserve the protection after all we've taken from them. Very upsetting. And this is the, the least that we can do for these mountain lions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Uh, good afternoon. Brendan Cummings, Center for Biological Diversity. The only thing I really wish to add in light of what's been said so far is thank you to department staff and commission staff for all the work you've done on mountain lions uh, to date. And we look forward to working with you as cooperatively, as collaboratively as possible over the coming year and beyond uh, for, to take and accomplish the very difficult steps uh, that are necessary to protect and recover these lions. So thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Next speaker, perhaps you're muted. Uh, on your phone if you're muted. Yes. Um, good afternoon, President Sklar, Director Bonham, and commissioners. And thank you for the opportunity to comment on the petition to list the mountain lion as endangered. Uh, this is Donna Cassano. I am a concerned citizen as well as an employee of the National Wildlife Federation and part of the California regional team working to raise funds for the wildlife crossing at Liberty Canyon Road. Um, I have been fortunate to encounter the majestic mountain lion in the wild, and I am passionate about protecting them so that they remain part of California's landscape. Considering all of the challenges the Southern, Cal uh, the Southern and Central Coast cougar populations are facing, um, I support the petition to consider the listing of mountain lions as endangered I encourage the commission to vote yes today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Next speaker, please. Oh, hi. This is Tiffany Worthington, and I'm a proud Californian and member of Direct Action Everywhere. And I just want to say, gosh, just, um, I'm grateful to hear the overwhelming support of you taking actions now to do all that's necessary to protect the frighteningly few mountain lions left. And I doubly endorse these and more measures to protect our mountain lions. And thank you so much. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Hello, this is Joel Schulman, Poison Free Malibu. I'd like to address the rat poison issue. Uh, the Department of Pesticide Regulation tried in 2014 to improve the situation for wildlife and totally failed. Uh, Richard Bloom has led us with AB 1788 to try to fix the situation. A major challenge is preemption, the state law that stops localities from regulating pesticides unnecessarily. This has frustrated local issue, uh, officials and citizens, as you've been hearing, who, have been, who would love to have passed laws like this. So this CISA listing is a really great solution where locally oriented uh, regulations can be instituted to protect the six sensitive areas. Very important feature is that poison restrictions should be much larger area than just where the mountain lions roam. A large buffer is needed because intermediate animals like rodents, coyotes, and raccoons move quite far distances um, in and out of the uh, mountain lion area. So please consider that when you are considering when you are developing the, the rat poison restrictions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next caller, please. Hi, I'm a taxpayer in Santa Clara County. I want to thank the Commission for their commitment to r free and to science-based wildlife management. I urge the Commission to reject this petition. The mountain lion is not facing extinction in California. Populations around the state are robust. Populations are so high, we've had many conflicts between lions and humans, including attacks on humans, 
that have resulted in closing public access to specific public land. A few isolated populations are in danger from being isolated, but all we need to do to support those species, those groups, is to build wildlife crossings and tunnels. The presenters did not show any data that would suggest that decreasing depredation permits or decrease for genocide use will help these isolated populations. Approving the petition will make it more expensive and more difficult to build housing and to control rodent activity during a time when homelessness is at a crisis level and rodent-borne diseases are spreading among humans around homeless populations. The mountain lion versus human conflicts are on the increase. Let's focus on building wildlife crossings. Please vote to reject this petition. Thank you for letting me speak. Thank you, sir. Next speaker, please. Hello, this is Julie Newsom. I'm a California native and longtime advocate of wildlife research in the Santa Monica Mountains. I'm speaking today in strong support of listing the mountain lions in the region specified in this petition as a threatened or endangered species. For time purposes, I won't repeat, but echo the many reasons submitted by those in support. Our California state flag is emblazoned with a grizzly bear, now extinct in this state. It is my hope that mountain lions in California do not follow suit and in the future only exist in our memory. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Hi there. Um, this is Amy Gottlieb. I'm the Vice President of Conservation at Oakland Zoo. I so appreciate a chance to say something. Um, as I say something, as we speak and meet, our vet staff at the zoo is skillfully caring for an orphaned female, five-month-old wild mountain lion who was found hiding and crying in a tree. She's likely motherless due to car strike or depredation, and she is our 11th to come into our care in less than two years. She's beautiful and getting the best care possible, but her presence at our facility is also really heartbreaking. If she survives, she can never be wild again, if she cannot survive without the training of her mom, and a human captive, a humane captive wildlife home will be the best she can expect. Her sibling, her likely sibling, didn't survive at all, was found starving with parts of a basketball in her stomach. She and other puma cubs and adults deserve a safe wildlife, and I hope as you make this decision, you'll think of her. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hello, my name is Vrasa Petrovskaita. I'm a volunteer with two animal rights groups, Direct Action Everywhere and Compassionate Bay near San Francisco. I strongly support listing mountain lions as endangered species. This is because I feel a lot of compassion for animals and I want to protect all animals that I can because it's the morally right thing to do and all animals deserve love, compassion, and protection. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hello, my name is Rocky Chow from San Francisco, California. I am uh, from Compassionate Bay, and I support having mountain lions considered for protection as they have a right to a habitat or home just like us. And we ought to look after their interests and protect them and not the cattle ranchers who are looking to protect their profits. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next speaker, please. Hello, my name is Robin Greenberg, president of the Bel Air Beverly Crest Neighborhood Council in the Los Angeles, Santa Monica Mountains, representing 27,000 homes. We support the work of council persons Paul Koretz and David Rue in Los Angeles City Council to amend state law and end the issuance of depredation permits for mountain lions and establish an indemnity fund to reimburse any affected individuals who lose an animal to a mountain lion and to emphasize the need to support the listing of the Southern California coastal mountain lions as an evolutionary significant unit that is threatened. The loss of P-56 was a tragedy. He was one of only two known breeding males in the Santa Monica Mountains and a radio collared member of a long-term National Park Service study. P-56 deaths put the entire population closer to the brink, but his loss will not be in vain. If it drives this administration, 
the legislature, and the public to work together to develop a comprehensive solution to save our alliance from becoming California's latest contribution to the global biodiversity crisis. Thank you very much. And in addition, the listing the mountain lion. Your time time is up. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. All right, next speaker, please. Hi, my name is Kimberly Booster. I'm a a Project Coyote Associate, and thank you so much for allowing us to speak and all of your great work. I agree with the CBD uh, speakers and also the Project Coyote speakers. I also agree with Senator Henry Stern. I'm hoping with these new times that possibly possibly the department will start looking at a more agile decision-making process and basically because our, our wildlife cannot wait. By the end of this final decision, it may be a full three years. Thanks again so kindly for holding this meeting during this pandemic, and it's, it's working really well, in my opinion, and I strongly support CSA listening. Thank you. Thank you very much, particularly for your comments about the meeting and how it's going. <laughs> Next speaker, please. Good afternoon, President Sklar, members of the Commission and staff. This is Camilla Fox, Executive Director of Project Coyote. I'm speaking on behalf of our California members and supporters, and we strongly support this petition and the science behind it. Members of Project Coyote Science Advisory Board, several of whom have studied wild carnivores in California, including mountain lions, have reviewed this petition and believe that the science is sound and that there is adequate data indicating that mountain lions are struggling in portions of the state and that listing is warranted. Senator Pavley and Tiffany Yap succinctly articulated the challenges that mountain lions currently face, so I won't repeat them here. As stewards of our state's wildlife, which is held in the public trust, we encourage you to act on the precautionary principle by moving forward with formal consideration to list mountain lions under the California Endangered Species Act. Let's not wait until our precious cougars are in critical condition. As Senator Henry Stern said, nature will not wait. The time for protection is now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Hi, this is Jennifer Haig, uh, Legislative Affairs Manager with the Animal Legal Defense Fund. And I just wanted to go on record supporting um, everyone else who's made comments in favor of the petition. I don't want to take up any more of your time otherwise, but uh, thank you for letting me speak and register our position. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Hello, my name is Carla Cabral, and I'm a concerned citizen who works with several animal rights groups. Thank you so much for this opportunity to speak. Um, As humans encroach into the natural mountain lion habitat, we disrupt an important ecosystem to our own detriment. And while they may kill a small percentage of other animals that the animal agriculture industry takes ownership of, humans are responsible for killing all of the rest of those animals for their own profit. There are more than 1 million vacant units in California, according to 2017 U.S. Census data, the most recent available. So we must not use our houselessness problem to justify pushing out these precious species. In the last 100 years, there have only been 20 reported deaths by mountain lions. So for all these reasons and more, I am in favor of this petition. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Hello, Robert Van de Hook. I hope to add some new information of science for you in conservation. And I think I support, well, I know I support your petition too, but also funding. And I urge your commission to help with the Wildlife Conservation Board and urging the, the assembly and the legislature, Senate to fund and help the National Park Service. NPS uh, is uh, in my conversations with their scientists have learned that um, we're dealing with a predator-prey relationship and the main prey of the mountain lion is deer. And in the Santa Monica Mountains, we're going to need to know uh, the deer ecology. The National Park Service has not been able to initiate a study to know the details of deer ecology, which relates to botany 
and vegetation as their forage and cover, and we're at an urban aisle interface. So there's a real need to uh, continue to do study as we do the petition process to learn how the deer ecology is and vegetation um, together are working to uh, help or Thank hurt you, the mountain lion the up. and then to move forward. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I just wanted to urge that you support funding, as I already said, to help. Appreciate okay, it. Thank, thank you very much. much. Next speaker, please. Caller, please go ahead. Your line is open. You may be muted. Uh, can you unmute your phone, please, if you are? Now we'll move on to the next caller. Thank you. I was muted. Thank you. My name is Kathy Lieberman, and I'm another concerned California citizen and lifelong wildlife lover. I am in support of listing the mountain lions under the SESA. And I would just, uh, for those of you out there, I would like to volunteer my services as an electrical design engineer to help any hobby farmers or ranchers with livestock who are not in support of this listing. I will help you design and build systems that will deter lions from getting at your animals and hopefully render the depredation um, uh, licensing nil or null. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Hello, my name is Susan Kirk. I'm a naturalist specializing in American badger, a meso predator, and chair board of directors of Paula Lane Action Network, a conservation nonprofit headquartered in Northern California. For the petition before you today, commissioners, please seriously consider the sound scientific evidence presented. Rely on experts like Dr. Clinton Martins of Audubon Canyon Ranch in Northern California and the Living with Lions program. The Commission's approval to review this petition will acknowledge the crisis related to mountain lions, apex predators, and will be the right decision for California. Thank you for the opportunity to comment. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon. Thank you for allowing this comment session. My name is Eve Lovato. I am a sustainability undergraduate student at Pepperdine University in the Malibu Santa Monica Mountains. And as part of the Generation Z age group, I ask that mountain lions be protected in Central Coast and Southern California so that my generation doesn't see these lions go extinct in California's unique chaparral ecosystem be destroyed in my lifetime. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Hello, my name is Cynthia Bire. I am a filmmaker and a journalist and was originally inspired by Mountain Lion P22, whose plight has brought together generations of people, regardless of age, gender, or race, to join as a community and to take action to support our ecosystem and protect wildlife. I believe it is essential to list the California mountain lion as an endangered species. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. At this time, we have no more callers in queue. Great. Thank you, Lauren. Appreciate it. And I want to express deep appreciation for all the members of the public who've, uh, who've spoken today on this topic and, and many others and yesterday as well. Um, you know, we, uh, we wanted this to work. We worked uh, tirelessly, the staff, particularly of the commission and some of the department staff members worked tirelessly for the last week with multiple trial runs to try to get this to work. And I have to say, um, I hope nobody's been frustrated by it. I know it's uh, maybe Senator Stern the most, um, um, but I, I hope nobody's been frustrated by it. I know it's not been perfect, but from my view, and we'd love to hear from you about, you know, if you had a bad experience, because we do want to improve for our next meeting. Um, so do email us if, if you had trouble and we'll try to figure out what that was about. Um, but I think overall this has gone incredibly well so far in the public comment. Um, I want to thank the staff also of the department, um, particularly the folks who worked on this, uh, Esther who worked on this on this listing petition and our staff who worked with her for really great work on a, on a terrific report. 
I want to ask uh, Director Bonham to speak now, and then we're going to have Council Young speak, and then the Commission will discuss it. Thank you, President. And I want to start where you left off and just say to everyone, you know, the 60, 70, 80 people that have been engaged over the course of today and uh, two, three, four hundred we had yesterday, I think this experience with the teleconference proves government is open and can include public engagement while we're in the middle of this pandemic. So that's a big thank you to each of you, whether you agree or disagree or you kind of mixed about any given agenda item today. You showed Californians it's possible to keep doing this work while we're also dealing with things in our professional and personal lives. And on that front, the other thing I forgot to mention but want to mention now, I think I was remiss saying to each of you, you know, from the heart, stay safe, stay healthy. If you can, stay home. Saving lives, we're going to get through this and we get better and get through it together. So from there, I just want to turn to a couple of the uh, comments, questions, concerns that were raised over the last hour. I think a debate that allows people to express views is critical for the commission to make informed decisions. As director of the department, in the department more broadly, we have lived many of the experiences that come up in these conversations. We are often in the middle of tension where our communities have different perspectives. So this topic of depredation for me is one I've experienced. It's one the department is working through. Just for clarity's sake, commissioners, from where I sit, I see a logic fallacy in an assertion brought from our ranching, farming community in this conversation. I understand the concerns and I understand the need for the department to remain engaged with those communities on this, but an argument I hear that the commission is prohibited from taking action assumes a conflict that does not exist. Just because one can create an assumption doesn't mean it's always right. So if you take a look at chapter 10 of our code, which is the code chapter about mountain lions, you'll see that section 4801.5 says, unless authorized in this chapter, non-lethal procedures shall be used when removing or taking any mountain lion that has not been designated as an imminent threat to public health or safety. Nowhere else in the chapter does the code mention whether a depredation permit will be for lethal or non-lethal action. Nowhere else. So the department, as I said earlier, comes to this question thinking about the obligation to reconcile first, not assume a conflict from the beginning. And that's how we would approach this dynamic if you were to move to candidacy around depredation and CISA. Let me next say that we can do this. We've got over 300 animals and plants, I think, on the California Endangered Species Act list. And at the same time, we're the fifth biggest economy in the world. And the department's experiences, and I as director, have gone through dynamics around tricolored blackbird in the dairy industry, have gone through owls in the timber industry, and know that related to mountain lions are relationships that must be maintained and strengthened with our partners in the building industry. We can do this. And the department's experience, I think, could help if you would like to go to candidacy, which I think some of the speakers may misunderstand. 
going to candidacy allows an additional deeper scientific dive by the department, but during that year, the animal or the plant of candidacy receives all legal protections. That's important for those who are thinking about this topic from the species conservation side, but it also raises something I want to say about our partners in the building industry and association. Look, housing is a fundamental issue in the state of California. Our governor is a leader on addressing homelessness in this state. It's an issue we've got to grapple with. At the same time, we are in the middle of an economic dynamic, which some economists are beginning to say resembles more the Great Depression than the most recent Great Recession. One of the ways in which you can help your economy come out of that kind of situation is a surge through our building trades. The department knows the importance of these other state interests. So in my mind, I don't see a reasonable scenario where development writ large would be prohibited. The department has tools to work with project proponents who are engaged in increasing our housing stock. We have a way to create a unit at our apartment that can interface with project proponents. We have the experience around this with large-scale housing efforts. I disagree with the petitioner in the petition if their allegation is things like natural community conservation plans and habitat conservation plans cannot adequately conserve lions. I think they can. The issue is using those plans and the implementation of them to achieve both CESA objectives and housing stock development needs. I think that's all doable. And I actually think in this region in Southern California primarily, the idea of connectivity and corridors should be a regionalized outcome that is not just about building, but is also about transportation, is about local government, and all of us thinking about a regionalized approach to incentivize those actions. So my last comment, we have more biodiversity in this state than any other state in the union. We are the fifth biggest economy in the world. We know how to collaborate and rely upon partnerships. My door is open for those stakeholders who are nervous about possible impacts if the commission were to go to candidacy. I think we can do both of these things, do right by our environment and our economy. California proves that always. We're the land that's the art of possible, the land of creativity and diversity, and I think we can do this. So with that, I don't have anything else to say, and I wish you luck in your deliberations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Director Bonham. Uh, uh, one issue I want to raise uh, online for our commissioners to know, I know Melissa is letting them know, that we may get cut off at 6 o'clock. We're not sure yet. So let's keep that in mind as we talk about this. Uh, and we have one more item that we, if we don't get to, we'll, we'll survive. Um, but we want to give this, you know, give this short shift. And the only thing I would add, this is a, a personal comment. Uh, I've been in, uh, as a local official, elected official, and married to an affordable housing developer, planner, I've been very focused, and particularly in the Bay Area, on the fact that we need more housing, but we need to infill and build up and not build out. That's one of the key fundamental philosophies that will solve this conflict and this dilemma. And so we'd ask our builder friends to work with the state on how we do that, how we look at, at expansion of housing in a way that reduces uh, the, the threat to uh, our native uh, wildlife. Um, and, uh, and we all work together on that, as Director Bonham said. Um, so with that, I invite my fellow commissioners. Uh, I'll start with uh, uh, Vice President Murray, if she'd like to speak and talk on this. Uh, we go with her first, and then we'll go through the commissioners, and then, uh, and then we'll uh, decide whether we have a motion today or not. Great. Thank you, President Sklar. I, actually, I was going to ask, was, was our uh, attorney going to say something? No, we, uh, we, we kind of, uh, he, we, we, we were uh, doing sign language while uh, Director Bonham was thinking, and, and Director Bonham's covered what, uh, what Mike might have Captured a lot of it. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, so for me, I, I've read the department's evaluation, and I agree that the petition meets the Section 2072.3 requirements for population trend, range, distribution, abundance, life history, and these other factors 
um, that they're meant to include. Notably, there are really clear factors affecting their uh, ability to survive and reproduce, and there is an extraordinary immediacy to the threat um, to these mountain lions. Uh, the genetic viability of these subpopulations is at risk, and that definitely compromises their long-term population viability in my, in my, my view and my read. Um, as I read it, I note that our determination today is purely decided under CISA. It's a determination about, you know, the level of imperilment of the species, or in this case, an evolutionarily significant unit of a species. So for this reason, I don't personally see an actual conflict with our action today and Prop 117. Um, so for me, the petition includes sufficient scientific information to indicate that the action may be warranted under Section 2074.2. So, so I will be supporting that finding. Great. Thank you, Vice President Murray. Um, uh, Commissioner hosser Carmerson, would you like to say something or ask anything? No, I, I believe that department staff has done an excellent job. I'm going to also support um, the motion. I, I do think it meets the threshold. I really, truly appreciate Chuck's leadership in this, and I, I believe that we can uh, do both as well. I, I really think that the working with the housing industry, I, I appreciated that. And I think it can be considered equally transportation. I, I'm an avid transportation person. I've been in transportation for almost 30 years. So I'm really excited about the opportunities for the connectivity. Um, I'm going to have to support it. Right. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Burns. Uh, yes, thank you, Eric. I also am going to support it. Um, I do appreciate Director Bonham's comments. I do think that uh, sitting down with the building trades and the building community at large within the state to address some of their concerns is extremely important, um, whether it is building up or spreading out. It's something that's going to continue to happen within the state of California. Um, and I think the more people we get engaged in that, the more likelihood we can come to a compromise that will meet everybody's um, liking to one degree or another. Um, I am a little bit concerned about the depredation issue. Uh, I do believe that that's an issue that we can get through um, in this 12-month period. Uh, and I 100% am going to throw my hat in the ring that if there's anything that I can do to help with either side of that, the depredation portion, with the ranchers, with the consumption uh, individuals, as well as the building industry, that I'm here to help out any way I can. Thank you, Commissioner Burns. And last, but certainly not least, uh, Commissioner Silva. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. I, I too, am going to support the motion. I mean, I think, well, first of all, I think there were excellent presentations from both the petitioners and the department. Um, and as, <clears throat> as the director mentioned, I mean, I think you know, we went through this uh, this concern with potentially impacted stakeholders on the track of Blackbird, I think we came out in a good spot. Um, you know, so I think I'm very confident that department staff will work with stakeholders on this depredation issue, which is really the biggest sticking point, I think, for, for everyone. So, uh, so with that, yeah, I think, you know, I'll just, I, will, I will support the motion. Great. Since uh, you did go last, Commissioner Silva, would you have the honor? I, I'm going to just, I have nothing left to say. I'm kind of I'll talk out today. Um, and so I'm going to let uh, you make a motion if you'd like to, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Silva. No, you know what? I, I don't have it in front of me. So okay, I'm... okay. I'm sorry. Uh, would somebody else like to make a motion, please? On page two of the staff report. Or four, rather, I'm sorry. Oh, you know what? Since I didn't talk, why don't uh, I make I... a motion? <laughs> I move that the commission pursuant to section. 2074.2 of the Fish and Game Code finds the petition to list one or more evolutionary significant units of mountain lion as endangered or threatened species does provide sufficient information to indicate that the petition action may be warranted based on the information in the record before the commission directs staff to issue a notice reflecting this finding and declares within the southern ESU mountain lion is a candidate for, for threatened or endangered species status. Second. Okay. 
Motion made by me and seconded by Commissioner Murray. Roll call, please, Sherry. Vice President Murray. Aye. Commissioner Burns. Aye. Commissioner Silva. Aye. Commissioner Hofstra Carmison. Aye. President's card. Aye. Thank you very much.